To say you gotta know somebody Or know somebody To give somewhere these days To say you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright Cause you know that's alright with me Yeah, you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright Cause you know I was, I was actually gonna start out by saying, you know, Phil, Phil actually has a, a real passion for it and a good aptitude for sales. And part of part of what my forte is is, is also communication and glue. We did these like strengths finder tests a while ago. And uh, if you ever uh, disc is one of the tests, I don't know, you can take this kind of like personality test. There's another one, Strengths Finder 2.0. We took this Strengths Finder test, and I think we both were pretty high on the influence and communication and all that stuff. But anyway, uh, the the uh, the private money that that we're talking about, I just want to get into a, a couple different nuances with it because um, first of all, I've I've never ever ever in my life borrowed money from a bank to buy a house. Never never done. Absolutely. Not. Now I've refinanced places. I've got lines of credit on places. But I've never actually, uh, never done a deal where I actually had a, you know, it's contingent upon mortgage qualifying. You know, didn't do that. The other thing I want to say is um, our, the money that we, the monthly payments that we make on most of our rental properties, I would say about probably 80% of them, uh, maybe close to that, 70, 80% of our loans are actually not to humans. They're to their IRAs or their 401ks. So there's people that are in the marketplace that had, you know anybody that when the recession came, they lost their like corporate j high paying job? You know any of those people? Well, all those people had 401ks and, then, and when they left their company, they, maybe they became a real estate agent, maybe they got another job, but they had this whole 401k that they converted to a, an IRA. And, and a lot of our payments go to those IRAs. So, and, and people always say, well, geez, well, aren't they, aren't they gonna get punished for taking money out of their IRA? No, 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 they actually leave it in their IRA, and they tell their IRA what to invest that money in, right? So just like you uh, you tell your IRA to invest in Merck Sharp and Dome Pharmaceutical stock, you, you, you go online and you tell your custodian, send the money there, you know, it's investing within your IRA. Well, the same thing can happen with uh, IRAs for real estate, except for you need a specific type of company that handles the IRA to do it. So. Uh, you need a fully self-directed IRA. So the, the people like uh, Chuck Schwab or, or Smith Barney or I don't know, whoever else is out there, uh, Fidelity, they say, yeah, you can you can invest in anything you want as long as it's you know on, on our menu, right? So if you if you go to a Chinese restaurant and you order a t you know pasta and meatballs, they're like, wait a second, that's not on our Chinese menu, right? Um, so this is the thing: these self-directed IRA companies. Uh, or what you need to look into. And what we often do is find people that have these traditional IRAs, and they'll just carve out a little piece of their IRA. Let's say they have a million bucks in their IRA, and we have a deal that's you know 150 grand. They'll carve out 150, 300, whatever, and they'll change custodians to another custodian that's self-direction. And they'll do a, you know maybe some of their stuff's in stock and some is in, in real estate. So they, this is just a, this is a little, little saying I borrow from humans, not institutions. And their, and their IRAs. So these, these investment vehicles like the Roth IRAs and the 401ks, these are like either tax deferred or tax free investment opportunities for your investors. The Roth IRA, they're very, you know, say how many people have a Roth IRA? And how many people have a traditional? Okay, how many have both? <laughs> okay. So the, the difference between a Roth and a traditional is the traditional, it's kind of like the seeds and the crops. You're either going to get taxed on the seeds before you plant them, or you're gonna get taxed on the crops when you harvest them. With a Roth IRA, you pay taxes, it's a post-tax dollar, so you actually pay taxes on it, on the money, and then you and then you contribute it to your IRA. A traditional IRA is when they used to you know withhold the money off, let's say your pay stub, or at the end of the year you contribute money and, and you take it as a deduction. The, the people that we deal with, you know, their money's either growing tax-free or it's growing tax-deferred, or they don't have to pay tax on it until years and years down the road. When you have real estate investors, we have people that buy real estate, that also buy real estate. In other words, they're, they're you know, not, I wouldn't say they're competing, because there's so many houses out there, but uh, the guy that called me today, he invests in Narstown, he's a landlord. He also lends us money, because it's in his IRA, he can't lend it to himself, he's not allowed to do that. So, um, but he's allowed to lend it to other people, so he's put money with us, he's, uh, we got a, a deal in Doylestown, he put money up on, uh, he called me today for some other thing, but um, 
you know, but even people that are in the same room, like, you know, I might not be able to borrow money on my own IRA to buy, to buy real estate, but I can borrow from Mike's IRA and he can borrow from my IRA. Uh, you might want to not want to go one to one. That might for the same exact amount. That doesn't look good. But uh, but you get the idea. there's a there's a publication that the IRS has that covers this. If you guys are as technical as I am and like to read about that stuff, it's publication 590. They've actually just this year split it up to publication 590A and B. So. Uh, if you look up IRS publication 590, you can read a little bit about the things that you can do and not do in an IRA. These self-directed custodians basically say, you know, I was talking about the menu of items that you can choose in your IRA. Like, if you, if you went to Fidelity and said, I want to invest in real estate, they're going to say, oh, well, we have a REIT. It's a real big state investment trust that buys commercial property in California. You can invest in that. Well, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. We're talking about investing in 123 Main Street over in... Hatboro. Yeah. That, and in order to do that, you need one of these self-directed facilities. Here's a couple names. Uh, Cattle Plan, they're local, they're now in Bluebell. Uh, equity Trust Company, it's like trustetc.com, Sterling, Guided, Hensco. And if you want, you write this little short uh, this short website down here, bit.ly, bit.ly, forward slash sdira. There's actually a, that website, I link to like a whole list of them. So um, these are self-directed custodians, and, and the difference is they say you can invest in anything as long as the IRS doesn't prohibit it. And here are the prohibitions. Things like this, artwork, rugs, antiques, metals, gems, stamps, coins, alcoholic beverages, other potential personal property, certain things. So the, that publication 590 goes over that as well. So, so these, these investments are things that um, if these custodians allow you to invest in anything you want as long as it's not prohibited. Does that make sense? Very important. There's also some important rules like self-dealing, you're not allowed to lend to yourself, you can't lend to one of your family members, or there's certain different, there's, there's certain regulations you really need to be careful. You can lend to your brother. You could purchase property in your IRA, in yes. your IRA, you can purchase property. Yeah, you, you have property. You can have a self-directed IRA that, that, that buys the property itself, right. but it can't lend you the money to buy the property, and then you glean the, the rewards off of that. Right. Now, it becomes complicated. My concern with your IRA owning a property is if something happens with the property, who gets sued? The IRA. You really want to have, pay somebody to defend your IRA in a lawsuit? Like, to me, so that's a little IRA sticky. IRA is generally protected. Yeah. It is protected. I, I, uh, I, I wouldn't, especially if I had, see, there's some neat things about IRA. You see, when, when you have a, an IRA and you're going to do something risky in it, the nice thing about it is you can split off a piece of the IRA and, and just pay 50 bucks or whatever to open up a new IRA account and do that risky thing. Let's say you're doing a rehab on a property. Um, that's something that I would take a piece of the IRA and, and move it over to another account and then do that rehab in, in a separate IRA just so that it doesn't, something in here couldn't possibly affect other things in the IRA. I mean, I'd be really scared about that. But your IRA would buy insurance for protection. To insure the IRA? Sure. It's to possible. insure the property against lawsuits. And right. then your IRA funds are also protected. So you're saying that you don't think a, an IRA could get a judgment against it? If it, if it uh, I don't know, but I don't know. Yeah, I've never, I've never bought direct. I have bought options in my IRA. Uh, I've never bought a property directly in my IRA, but uh, you know, Larry's into options. So stock growth, but I do real estate options. And uh, I've bought those in the IRA, which, which I think is a great a great tool because an option, uh, I just never like being on title. I just, well, for I, me, it's very... I just very, have to in my retirement Right. And yeah, I, I know you can do that. So I know you can do that. I just have, have never done it. And, uh, and I just, I would feel... I would feel a little uneasy about, you know, in the event of a lawsuit, I guess if you have insurance, the insurance comes into play and they hire the attorney. Sure. The other thing that when you do that, though, is if you buy property in your IRA, you can't, you know, you can't give it any personal benefit or else it's considered an excess contribution. So you can't uh, go over there and say, like, oh, geez, that mailbox is crooked. Let me dig a new hole for it. You know, things like that. Yeah. So you have to hire yeah. it again, yeah. <clears throat> which, is, which is good in a way. Because if you learn how to do it without your personal involvement, you, right. you actually have a scalable model. <laughs> uh, 
my friend used to tell me I had a pickup truck. I, I do now. He said, you know, you, I, I caught myself going to Home Depot all the time. He said, you need to get yourself a nice sedan with like leather seats so you'll stop going to Home Depot and put all that junk in your truck. <laughs> you need a Home Depot run? I'll go. <laughs> Um, we, uh, let me see. All right, so as far as the IRAs go, the, I talked a little bit about good candidates for IRA, people that you know, might have lost their corporate job and, and uh, converted those, those assets, the, the uh, 401k assets to a traditional IRA, they do like a rollover. Um, you can transfer money from basically from any custodian to another custodian, and you're not actually taking the money out of an IRA, you're just changing the custodianship money. So transferring from you know, one custodian that allows certain things like uh, mutual funds and stocks into real estate, where you can own, you know, and Phil was saying, this is a simple business. The simplicity of the investment in real estate for somebody, I think, I mean, to say, hey, you're investing in a mutual fund, well, what does a mutual fund do, and what's that? And you have to explain how each of these components go, you know, for me, real estate is it's, it's simplest investment. You say, look, your IRA is going to have a mortgage against this property. It's a house. You probably live in one. It's easy to understand. So you have a lien against this house, um, and we have payments to you each and every month. The payments are a fixed interest rate. Uh, or, or however you structure it, you can make them variable, you can make them fixed, you can make it principal and interest. We keep it simple and just make it interest only. So, uh, so in, in this, in this example, like I said, the IRA, in the case that an IRA is lending on a property, not owning it directly, the note and the mortgage are actually owned by the retirement account. So that just goes in a file folder somewhere, just like a, a line item on your spreadsheet that says that you own stock in XYZ. There's other people that have been getting into this. I use a trust. Some people use LLCs. But uh, there's there's a lot of fees charged by these custodians when you're when you're doing uh, transactions in your IRA. Every time you you uh, you do a withdrawal or you do a placement for an investment that's in an IRA, they'll charge you a fee to process the paperwork. Uh, sometimes it's not only the fee, but it's the time frame it takes. So if I call up the custodian and say, "Hey, I got a real estate deal I want to fund," I say, "Okay, fill out the paperwork, send it all in, we'll review it, do all this stuff." Uh, a lot of people. A lot of the, the crafty people that I know, they'll form an LLC or a trust. Trust is easier to form, um, but and they'll invest their IRA in that LLC or trust. And now there's a checkbook that their trustee has or the LLC uh, managing member has that that then has a checkbook, so they can then, you know, in it. In other words, the, the the IRA only owns one asset. It's either the trust or the LLC. And then that trust of the LLC can invest in different properties. That's kind of an easy way to uh, manage it outside of the, having to involve the custodian in every single decision. You want to be careful because you, you know I've had some attorneys say that you know you personally don't want to be the trustee because then you have direct access to the money yourself. Uh, you want to have some other third party. I've had other attorneys that say no, it's no problem. So I, I'm not comfortable having it be myself. I, I, I use somebody else. Uh, 